Hello, with the NFL draft coming this Thursday, Sterling from Silver Star Sports and I decided to get together and do a mock draft. Sterling, how are you doing today? Doing really good. I'm excited for the NFL draft. It's the only thing keeping me sane during this quarantine time. Um, excited to see how it all unfolds. Oh my God, I am dying for sports. And with that Jordan documentary yesterday, I think this is the first time in like five weeks my TV had actually been on ESPN. <laughs> True, yeah. Yeah, you can only watch so many reruns of former events. Oh my god, get tired. It's like awful. Like I can't, I can't do that stuff. <laughs> I can't watch reruns. Um, yeah. all right, so let's dive right into it. So the first pick, we got the Bengals. Now I saw that you put them 29th in your power rankings. I think that they're a team that could surprise some people this year. I'm not saying they'll get in the playoffs, but I think they could easily win six games. And yeah. from where they were last year, that's a huge improvement. They're also going to be adding Jonah Williams, who was out last year. Um, he was the tackle from Alabama. So it's kind of like they're going to be getting two first-round picks. They obviously need a quarterback, old lineman, linebacker, tight end, pass rusher. What do you think about the Bengals? Uh, the Bengals, like you said, I had them 29th in my power rankings. My power rankings were like a pre-draft thing, so it wasn't accounting for Joe Burrow yet. But... The Bengals, I think last year was a bit of an anomaly. Like, they're not typically that bad of an organization. So I think they'll bounce back. And as you said, Jonah Williams, he was my top offensive tackle prospect last year. So he'll be a big add. Um, They have the 33rd picks. That's basically almost another first-round pick. Um, The only thing I'm not sure about the Bengals is, is, is Zach Taylor, their head coach. I don't know if he's like Sean McVay or I don't know if he's like one of the worst coaches because I couldn't really see like any improvement from the Bengals from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, but who knows? It's such a copycat league. It was almost like if you had a cup of coffee with Sean McVay for like a year, you got a head coaching job. So yeah, I mean, like you don't really know if he's the guy because some guys are just not cut out to be a a coach. They're just coordinator type of guys. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, first pick. I think it's Burrow. What do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd lock that in. All right, so it's lock in Burrow. Second pick, we got the Washington Reds, Redskins. New coach. They're basically starting over again in D.C. They'll have to decide if Haskins is the man or not the man. The main thing with them, I think, is if they're going to trade Trent Williams, this is a time to trade Trent Williams. Yeah, that bridge has been burned with Trent Williams. I think go ahead and trade him see what assets you can get rather than drag it out any longer you know yeah I mean because I think how I look at stuff with players is if they're not going to resign you want to trade them when their ROI is the highest and I think a third round right now would be the top you can get for them yeah so hopefully you know it'll be interesting to see if they're able to swing a deal for them because there are teams that need an O-lineman um, their needs are tight end, wide receiver, running back, O line, and a pass rusher. Um, I mean, another no brainer, Chase Young. Yeah, I don't know how you could pass up on Chase Young. Generational pass rusher, right there. And the thing with him, like we kind of saw with the 49ers last year, is when you get that pass rusher, it just makes the whole defense better. Yeah. Um, I right, the third pick is my Detroit Lions. So I have a friend that works in works in the Lions organization and last week he told me that the Patriots offered a first and two for, two future first round picks for this third round pick. I just don't think see how with it being a win now for Patricia and, and uh Quinn how they would make make that trade but they could possibly trade down with the Dolphins or the Chargers. Really? I just know being a Lions fan, whatever they do is going to be the wrong decision because they always mess things up. Um, they need a back. I think they kind of need a backup quarterback. I feel. I know they signed Chase Young, but I'm really not a Chase Young guy. Um, running back, O line, defensive line, and cornerback. I have down in their needs. Um, do you think the Lions are going to trade? I mean, what do you think about the Lions? Um, I think they'll end up with a Cuda, mm-hmm. but. I don't think they'll take him at three. I think they'll trade down because there's always going to be a QB needy team that is willing to uh, pay the price to get their guy. Mm-hmm. So 
in this scenario, I'm thinking the Dolphins. All right, so let's have them trade down with the Dolphins. Um, what are you? Uh, what What are we having the pick being? We're We're gonna have the trade. I'm so, like, uh, are you saying three and five, and then? And then what? What else would the Dolphins throw in? Twenty six, thirty nine. I'm thinking thirty nine because. Yeah. I think 39 too. I think giving up two firsts for a third is just too much. I know I've seen a lot of people say that 26, but a fifth and a 26 for a third just seems too steep in my eyes. Yeah. All right, so let's do that one. And then, uh, all right, so let's look at the Dolphins real quick now. Yeah. What do you think about the rumors coming out recently about Herbert, them liking Herbert more than Tua? Do you See, think it's a smokescreen? Do you think it's legitimate? Or I... So when Chan Gailey was hired, that hiring made zero sense to me. But when I looked into it more, four out of Fitzpatrick's five best seasons were under a Gailey's offense. So I think whoever they pick is obviously going to sit. And with the uncertainty of Tua's injuries, and if you pick a quarterback in the top ten that's a bust, I think they have to go Herbert. Yeah. I, I I agree. I think Tua's injury concerns are really going to scare them off to where it's close enough that they'll pick Herbert. But I still don't believe in Herbert as a top three pick. But I don't yeah. either. I think it's Burrow, huge drop, and then everybody else. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. So, and then also, like, I've talked to you before about my, my Tua rant. I just don't think his game plays at the next level just because he's he has a hip injury and that's going to decrease his movement. Also, if you watch the way he throws the ball, his palm placement is low on the ball and he just yeah, doesn't have that weird hitch. He's got a hitch and I put his throwing motion on a split screen that's to Burrow and it's like night and day. It's it, and Burrow really doesn't have that big of an arm strength. So, all right, so let's go. We're going Herbert here to the Dolphins, right? Yes. All right, so we got Herbert to the Dolphins. Now we got the Giants. Giants are another team that I like, and I saw they were low in your power, power rankings. I They're think Dan- my personal favorite team. So, oh. Uh, oh. I don't know if I'm a pessimistic Giants fan with how low I am on them. I think this they're going to do good this year, scares man. scares me. This I- pick scares me because I don't trust David Gettleman to make the right choice. Um, I would take Isaiah Simmons personally. I think he's a game changer. Mm-hmm. Can play all across that uh, defense or de- all across that defense. Um, but I know Gettleman likes his big boys, and he might go Becton. But I think he's the worst of the four tackles. So I, don't, I just don't know. And I've heard all sorts of rumors. So and plus, uh, it, it came out like he failed. A, he failed a drug test too. I don't see how you can take a. O lineman with a fourth pick after he failed the drug test. Yeah. So what do you think they do as far as? I mean, I think Simmons is, like you said, an insane talent and will be great at the NFL level. But with it being Daniel Jones and you got to protect the quarterback and Garrett has a great history of developing younger type, younger quarterbacks. Oh my <laughs> God. It's one I mean, part of me thinks if you're going to draft an offensive lineman, you're better off trading down with the Jaguars and taking Nijoku, like sending uh, yeah. the third, pick, the fourth pick down to the Jaguars for the ninth pick in Nijoku. I think if you take an offensive lineman, you do that because you can get an offensive lineman there and you can have a defensive lineman. But if you're going to go Simmons, you just take Simmons. All right, so... What, do, what you do you want to do for this mock draft? Let's do Simmons. Let's just do Simmons. Okay. He's the best on the board. and So let's God, do Simmons. So I'll, I'll pencil in Simmons. Now we're at the Lions. Um, Back to the Lions. Lions, we said Nujoku, Ajoku, right? Replacing Slay. Right. You need a lockdown cornerback in the Patricia system. It just kind of makes sense. Yeah. Akuda, I think he's just he's so talented. His tackling ability... His uh, man coverage, zone coverage, his scheme, like independent, it doesn't matter what scheme he's in. I have high praise for him as a cornerback. 
And, like, the funny thing is, is people are saying, like, oh, well, he only had three interceptions. Well, that's because no one threw at him when he was yeah, at. Interceptions might be one of the worst indicators of for how good a corner is. I don't like, it's not just about interceptions, you know, passer ratings, oh, uh, yeah. deflections, you know, do they even throw his way, like you mentioned? And, I mean, he's got good footwork. He's fluid in his movement. I I think he's going to be a stud at the next level, and I think it's a no-brainer for the Lions to take him here. I, I agree. So let's lock that in. All right, so let's lock him in. Now we got the Chargers. Chargers, they improved their offensive line in the offseason, which was one of their glaring weaknesses. Personally, I don't think that Eckler is an every-down running back. Um, and also with them, Ingram and Bosa are both entering the final year of their contract. And this is they're starting the post Philip Rivers era, and I heard that they're going to run a version of the Ravens offense with Taylor under center. I have their needs as quarterback, running back, wide receiver, defensive line, and cornerback. What do you think about the Chargers? The Chargers are one of those teams uh, that I really believe in next year. I think last year everything went wrong for them. Like they went two and nine in games decided by seven points or less. Like that's not likely to be repeated again. I think Tyrod Taylor, he's not a high end quarterback, but I think he doesn't turn the ball over, which Philip Rivers did a lot last year. Mm -hmm. Their O line's better with Bulaga and Turner in the trade. Um, I like the chargers next year. I think they got a lot of playmakers Eckler, we still don't know if he's an every down back, but I like their weapons outside between Allen and Williams. Um, Hunter Henry is one of my favorite young tight ends in the league. Um, that D line, really impressive. Thing is, though, they have a lot of pending free agents, as you mentioned. Um, yeah. And a lot of people that need to get money. For the Chargers, I think one of the worst things they could do is take Tua or Herbert or whichever one falls to them. Yes. I'd keep building up that O-line, take Andrew Thomas or Jedrick Wills if I were them. Okay, yeah, I I think they should definitely go O-line too. Um, so, O-line, what do you want to do here? Do you want to go Thomas or Wierfs? Who do you like better? I kind of like Wierfs, but that's just, I mean, I don't know where you stand. I... Thomas is my offensive tackle one, and I actually have him as a top five prospect in this draft. I just okay. love his footwork. Um, he's more well-rounded, I feel like, than most of the other prospects. But I see him falling in a lot of boards, so let's go with Wirfs because that might be more realistic. Okay. All right, so let's go with let's go with Wirfs. Um, draft results. Now we're up to the Panthers. And I Panthers, I have no idea what they're doing. They traded their yeah. old lineman Turner to the Chargers, and you sign Teddy Bridgewater, but then you sign Robbie Anderson, who stretches the field, and Teddy Bridgewater doesn't throw down the field. So yeah, they're in a weird spot right now. Like they're rebuilding, but they were so uh, reluctant to rebuild for so long. And, uh, and like you can argue that Cam and Luke were the two biggest names in franchise history. And yeah. Absolutely. You lost them. You lost Ron Rivera. And I just kind of felt like last year with McCaffrey, they were just kind of giving McCaffrey the ball to give him the ball. They, yeah. It was kind of like, because they had Nor- North Turner, and it's when he came on and then his son took over, the offense was just funneled through McCaffrey. And I really feel that, all those touches are eventually going to going to catch up with the kid. Yeah. It would be a shame with that massive contract he signed if he got injured like next season or oh, and, season after, you know. And they have no They're running a big risk, yeah. And they have no backup running back either. They have none. Mm-hmm. Um so I have their needs as I think they need a quarterback. I'm not a Bridgewater guy. I actually think the offense would probably be better. You'd have more RPO options if PJ Walker was the quarterback one. Um they mm-hmm. need a backup running back, O-line. D line, secondary. I think I'm a big Bradbury guy. I think your Giants got a steal when signing him, and I think losing him is really going to hurt what they what they're going to be able to do defensively. Um, and I also kind of feel that this pick 
kind of ties into what the Giants do because if the Giants go offensive line, 